Good morning, Willow Springs. I'm Cora Craver. And I'm Abram Smith. A Lovejoy holiday tradition returns this weekend as we celebrate the Fine Arts Festival, showcasing our incredible students' work. And we celebrate our Varsity Girls cross-country team as they are back-to-back -back state champions, breaking a UIL state record. Plus, our WSMS cross-country teams have standout athletes, paving the way for more champions on the tracks. Our WSMS basketball teams are starting out with an incredible season so far. The USA men's soccer team makes it to the next level in the World Cup, beating Iran 1-0. Unfortunately, flu and COVID cases are overwhelming hospitals here in North Texas. And we've been on a weather whirlwind. What will the weekend be like? All this and more coming up on WSMS News. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Willow Springs News. We had extremes in the weather this week. Yes, the AC one day and the heat the next. It's doing a number on us. So, what can we expect for the weekend? Here is Sion with the forecast. Sion, are we cold or warm? Well, it's going back up this afternoon. As we enter the winter season, we see a spike in the highs today and on Monday. The high today is 67 and the low is 44, but it will start to go back down next week on Wednesday. Next week's weather is showing a few days with rain and some cloudy days. Sun won't be too evident next week. If you didn't know, we had an hour or two of flurries in the beginning of the break on Friday night and early Saturday morning. Up to a foot of snow was moving through East New Mexico and West Texas around Odessa. As of today, a snowstorm will be passing through Idaho Oregon and California. This is a lot of wintry weather to start December. Hurricane season is officially over, but other forms of severe weather are active. A series of tornadoes ran through Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana on Tuesday night. These storms caused two casualties and left 82,000 people powerless. Luckily, we weren't affected by those storms. That's all for your weather. Back to you guys. Thanks, Sion. And now for our top story. According to the Texas Department of Health, North Texas hospital beds are near capacity filled with sick people from the flu, COVID, and other respiratory illnesses. And for the first time since the pandemic, most of those illnesses are from the flu. Alice Lee, Natalie O'Donnell, and Reed Boardman report. <coughs> <coughs> from coast to coast, hospitals have been filling up with an abnormal number of flu, influenza, and RSV patients. Well, the holidays and when people gather for celebrations, you're going to be at higher risk to be exposed to more people all at one time. But also the cooler temperatures, we've had a recent change in weather and the temperatures are cooler. One of the most effective ways to prevent getting sick is vaccines. Nurse Glover explains. So it is formulated as a prediction of what the virus is going to be for this year. And it prompts your immune system to build kind of like an army inside of you. So that way, when you do get exposed, it's ready to fight and protect you. For WSMS News, I'm Natalie O'Donnell, Alice Lee, and Reed Borkman. Reporting. Thanks, Alice, Natalie, and Reed. Now for some of our great news. Our Lovejoy Girls Varsity Cross Country team breaks a record becoming 5A champions for the first time. And most of those girls were champs on the tracks here at Willow Springs. We've got lots of great stories coming up on WSMS Sports. Carson Branch, lead us off. Carson? Lovejoy High School lost to South Oak Cliff with a score of 42 to 37, ending their playoff run. This Lovejoy team showed a lot of fight after being down 42 to 10 going into the fourth quarter, but we scored 27 in the fourth quarter with three onside kicks in a row. However, this fourth quarter effort wasn't enough to defeat the Golden Bears. WSMS had its second wrestling meet at Sloan Creek this Wednesday against St. Mark's and Melissa. Our wrestlers dominated once again. Hi, I'm Davis Dunaway here with Kellen Gibson. How did the wrestling meet go last night? Why are you wearing a Santa outfit? It's for a project in media. Uh, we did good. I went 3-0 and against St. Mark's. How, how long did it take you to win? 30 seconds. What's your record again? 3-0. and I was there last night taking pictures. Um, the people who won include? Uh, William Brownlow, Carson Branch, uh, Brock McKnight. 
Lowen. Oh, look who's walking in. How'd you do last night? Good. What's your record? 6-0. and oh. That's pretty impressive. Willow Springs had their cross country meet this Tuesday. They won all four divisions. Tristan Arsenault and Chloe Renna both finished first place. Uh, we ran two miles in Rockwell and I got first. And what was your time? Uh, 10.08. Uh, I was quickly up front because I was the fastest one. Um, I beat everyone by 100 meters and I think I have a record time. The next meet is Tuesday here at Willow Springs after school. Both 7th and 8th grade boys won as well as 8th grade girls. The district meet will be this Tuesday at Willow Springs. High school cross country dominated too. The girls became national qualifiers making them the first 5A team to do so. They also set the UIL state record for the best score in history. Lovejoy High School basketball has started off well. The varsity boys are 5-1 and one with a win against Plano on Tuesday. Alfred Cheatham hit the game-winning free throw to win it, 38-37, and played Hillcrest Thursday. Eighth grade boys and girls played Rockwell Williams Thursday. Two weeks ago on Thursday, eighth grade boys and girls played Rockwell Kane. All teams won. I'm Bennett Crawford and I'm here with Patrick Modine. How do you think the game went? I think we did really good for our first basketball game of the year. Uh, how'd you do? I did good. I had two buckets, a couple of rebounds, and like three or four assists. All right, Andy Turnbow, how do you think you did? I think I did pretty good. I put up six. Uh, how do you think your team did? We did really good. We destroyed them. Camden Walmack, how do you think you did? I think I did pretty good. Uh, how do you think your team did? Uh, we did pretty good. Uh, we had a lot of fouls. Um, we went into double bonus in the first half with only 15 points, which was kind of depressing. And, you know, we just got to bring more effort on the court next game. But overall, we did pretty good, you know. All right, thank you. I'm here with AC. How do you think you did tonight? Um, I think I did pretty good. I had 23 points. How do you think the team did? Uh, we did amazing. The energy was good. Uh, what did the coaches say to you at halftime? Um, they said that we need to keep the energy up and keep pushing through. All right, Coach Yeager, what did y'all say? What did you say at halftime? Uh, you know, I just put it in their hands. Like I told them, they need to come up with a run. We didn't put anything new in. We didn't make a special play adjustment. We just ran, played basketball, make some buckets, get some stops, get some confidence, and that's what they did. And the results show. All right, thank you. Roll cards. All seventh grade girls teams won except a team this week against Rockwell Williams. We have some interviews with coaches and players. Roll the tape. I'm Ava Perrin here with Coach Stein. Coach Stein, how do you think seventh grade girls basketball is going right now? Um, I think it's going really good. We've only had like two weeks of practice and a Thanksgiving break, so I think we need to work on our conditioning a little bit. But so far we've won two games, so I think we're doing good. Um, what's your favorite part about coaching the girls basketball? So I coach C team and I love coaching them because they get to learn, they get to have fun, they get to exercise. It's a bunch of girls that love to be there and have a good time. Thank you. I'm Amy Perrin here with Grace Turks. Grace, how do you think the season's going so far? Okay, we've won one and lost one. What's your favorite thing about playing basketball? 
I'm in control. I'm Ava Parent here with Elena Bramschreiber. Elena, how do you think the season's going so far for girls basketball? I think it's going good. They're doing great. How much potential do you think the team has? I think they have a lot of potential. There's great athletes on their team. On Sunday, November 20th, the Dallas Cowboys faced off against the hot Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota, who were just coming off a thrilling win against the Buffalo Bills. Despite this, the Dallas Cowboys shocked the football ward and absolutely destroyed the Vikings. The Cowboys defense racked up seven sacks, and the likely defensive player of the year, Micah Parsons, had two of them. The Cowboys play again on Thanksgiving Day, providing a convincing victory against the New York Giants, winning 28-20. They'll play the Colts in Indianapolis on December 4th. The Bills and the Lions also play on Thanksgiving, where the 4-7 Lions surprisingly made quite a game out of it against the Bills. But the Bills managed to come through with a win 28-25. On Saturday, number 3 Michigan and number 2 Ohio State played each other in the game. This game was so important that me, Kate, and Simon decided to make a news package on it. The rivalry between Ohio State and Michigan is very historic, going back over 100 years. Ohio State fans say they despise Michigan so much that they don't even call them Michigan. They just refer to them as that team up north. On November 26, number three Michigan faced off against number two Ohio State in the biggest rivalry in college sports. Ohio State came in as the favorite, but Michigan proved everyone wrong by beating them 45 to 23. We interviewed students and coaches to see what they thought of the game and who they went for. Um, I thought it would be like a little bit closer than it was. It was kind of a blowout. I went for Ohio because like speed lives in Ohio. Ohio State quickly into Michigan territory. Stroud winds up, throws a deep ball side. Line! Caught! Touchdown! Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvelous! 42 yards! I think the Michigan-Ohio State game was very interesting and a close game for most of the time. Uh, Michigan, because they have cool colors and I like their school. I thought like it was the best college football game that week because it was the best rivalry in college football. Straw drops back, sets, and zone! Touchdown, Ameka Abuka! I went for Michigan because I don't like Ohio State. I don't know, I just don't, and neither does my family. I think it was a little bit disrespectful, but it was, I don't know, cool to watch. For WSMS Sports, I'm Cade Lynch with Braden Buchek and Simon McGoldrick. The World Cup is now underway in Qatar, and the U.S. draws their first two matches against Wales and England, but they managed to beat Iran and advance to the round of 16, where they would play Netherlands on December 3rd. And the game is over! After the USA's 1-0 victory against Iran, they are off to the round of 16 to play the Netherlands. In Iran's game against Wales, the players refused to sing their national anthem because of the human right protest happening in Iran. The Iranian government allegedly threatened the players' families if they did not sing the national anthem against the USA. The U.S. men's team account on Instagram posted a picture of the Group B standings showing the Iranian flag without the emblem of the Islamic Republic. Because of this, Iran is trying to get the U.S. kicked out of the tournament. The United States is standing side by side with the Iranian team. Back to you, Cora. Thanks guys. That's so exciting that the U.S. soccer team took a stand with the Iranian team. What bravery. When we come back, we take a sneak peek on what our fine arts students are preparing for in a Lovejoy tradition. Plus, we talk to the orchestra director, Ashley Dickens, about how she was able to get through some gloomy times with the pandemic, creating a wonderful atmosphere for her orchestra students. And we give you the lowdown on the rest of the school year. But first, a commercial break. Don't forget to come to the Fine Arts Festival Friday and Saturday. Welcome to Entertainment. I'm Chase Hunky. And I'm Cameron Johnson. The orchestra program recently competed in all region and won more spots than ever before, but it hasn't been easy. Kendall Burnett, Abram Smith, and Naomi Snyder take a look at their progress. It was the worst during COVID <laughs> to teach. I have PTSD from it. <laughs> Orchestra director Miss Dickens is on her third year teaching at Willow Springs. When she started, her students were mostly all virtual, meaning they were learning on the computer because of the pandemic. There are many things that you do as a music teacher that is very hands-on, and you can't do any of that through a computer. Dickens says many times she felt like a failure and cried a lot. It was unlike anything I'd ever experienced, and I truly um, 
had a really hard time with it. I thought about changing careers at one point. Um, I didn't feel like my kids were progressing and where they needed to be at certain points in the year and it just made me feel like a failure, honestly. But something magical happened. She worked so hard with her students and was able to motivate them to be their best, working long hours tutoring and practicing with them. Well, my schedule opened up a little bit where I could be here in the mornings um, to offer sectionals and extra help. So I think that definitely helped. Um, we also have more kids in private lessons. Recently, our region hosted the middle school all region orchestra auditions at Allen High School. This year, more students from WSMS made it. Dickens is very proud because the process was not easy. Students are given a packet of music and it has an etude plus excerpts of music and they learn it uh, with their private teachers on their own. I also offer sectionals before and after school. Lots of practice, lots of hours. It's really high level music, higher than what we play in class. I want the kids to play at the highest level, but also enjoy uh, orchestra. It takes a lot of practice. That's why orchestra every day is um, definitely what we need here in Lovejoy, not every other day like it was during the COVID year. I think my eighth graders now, I'm like, oh my gosh, we stuck, we stuck it out and we did this together and um, I got them to where they needed to be musically and technically and everything. And um, I think we have a close bond because we went through it together. For WSMS News, I'm Naomi Snyder with Kendall Burnett and Abram Smith reporting. An annual tradition is upon us. Lovejoy's Fine Art Festival begins this evening and continues all day Saturday. It's a chance to see our students work not in only visual arts, but also band, choir, orchestra, theater, and color guard. Here's a preview. Come to the Fine Arts Festival this weekend on Friday 6 to 7.30 and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Students in art, band, orchestra, theater, cheer, color guard, and choir have been hard at work preparing for the festival. Come support your fellow students and come to the Fine Arts Festival.
you may have been chosen for a Leopard Leadership Award. Your parents will receive an email and an invite to the ceremony taking place at 8 a.m. on December 7th. Good luck. Also, next Friday, we will have our winter pep rally and we will be on a pep rally schedule. We will have less than two weeks till winter break. Remember, exams are December 12th through 15th, and that Thursday is early release. And now for a couple of fun segments. Remember those old dances like the Gritty and the Renegade? We have put together a fun flashback. Social media has a big impact on students at WSMS. Let's see some of their favorite dances. That's it for our announcements. Have a good day and remember, Leopard's Roar is one. Roar! <laughs>